South of Talea, past the stormy seas of the Black Gulf, lies the Kingdom of Araby. Here the decadent caliphs and sultans rule cities made of white stone, and their realms are the vast deserts, oases that glitter like jewels, and mountains inhabited by fierce nomad warriors. Several great cities form a loose coalition, though in effect they are all independent states with their own rulers, traditions, and customs. The Sultan of all Araby claims to rule the whole peninsula, but has little power over the independent coastal city-states or over the fierce nomad tribes who wander the grand desert of Araby. The sheikhs, emirs, and sultans of Gopher, La Sheikh and Martek live in unimaginable luxury, served by hundreds of slaves who still fulfill their every whim. Their harems are filled with voluptuous beauties from across the world, and their treasure chambers with all the splendor and wealth of that distant land. Some of these despots are cruel by their nature ordering beheadings and the mutilation of even the pettiest criminals, while others are great rulers and patrons of art and science. Arabians have some knowledge of gunpowder weapons, but their religious dogmas prevent them from developing socially and technologically. Arabians worship a single god who is manifested on the world by his chosen prophets, and they share a common language Arabic. All Arabians speak and understand Arabic, although most of the merchant classes would be able to handle Old Worlder fairly easily. Most Arabians are shortish and swarthy, with hook noses and dark hair and eyes. Some of the Arabian kingdoms, or caliphates, lie upon the northern borders of the Southlands, and the people there are dark-skinned, although they share a common culture the other Arabians. The toughest fighters come from the nomadic tribes of the deserts, who are greatly feared by the more civilized traders who ply their trade along the caravan routes through these great deserts. The most notable warriors of Araby are the dervishes, fanatic religious warriors, all too willing to die for their god. Another famous type are the eunuchs, individuals trained since birth to serve as warriors or guards, and I would assume robbed of their girth to serve as warriors or guards. Not much is known about the society of the people of Araby, but from the few merchants and explorers who made their way into the kingdoms and empire of the old world, it can be assumed that commerce and trade are an extremely important part of their society. The Arabians are able to establish and monopolize the trade routes into the lucrative jade and spice lands of the Far East, such as Cathay and Ind, as well as trading with the barbaric Norse tribes, establishing the largest slave market in the city of Kofa. All this thanks to their unsurpassed mastery in their navigation of the seas. The economic growth of Araby has led their peoples to pursue the fine arts in pottery alchemy, medicine, and architecture, thus producing some of the world's most notable poets, doctors, sorcerers, and architects. Sorcerers in Araby are said to be able to capture genies in bottles who, upon uncorking, rise to the immense size that they are naturally at, and do the bidding of their master, and these wizards are rumored to fly upon carpets. Mystery shrouds the study of necromancy. To learn the fine, dark art, an aspirant must either seek a necromancer and become an apprentice, or acquire one of the forbidden tomes, such as the Book of the Dead, written by the mad Arabian prince Abdul ben Rashid. He travelled to the land of the dead, in the east of Araby, and driven mad by his experiences, he wrote his blasphemous masterpiece. He did not live to see the widespread public revulsion of his work, or the great pyre where the Caliph of Kasabar burned all the copies he could find. Unfortunately, the Caliph 
did not find them all. All of the Arabian city-states are nestled on the western coast of the continent, as the center is dominated by the nomad-infested Great Desert of Araby. Beyond the Great Desert lies the city of Bel Alek, closer to the land of the dead than any other human settlement, and alone there for that reason. Kofa is the most independent Arabian city, famed for its spice trade, home to scholars and wizards, as well as the feared pirates of Kofa. El Haik, or Al Haik, city of thieves and the largest trading port of Araby. El Calabad is located near the Gulf of Medes, south of Araby proper. Le Sheikh is home to the Sultan and his mighty fleet, also feared as the center of the slave trade through most of the known world. Martek, a city rich from mining the Atalan Mountains, surrounding the bottomless lake of Fazolth Ar, in which are said to dwell sinister forces. Additionally, the palace of the Wizard Caliph stands alone, if one travels south past the Eunuch Mountain, then you will come and find it. It is spoken about throughout Araby, that there is little about the art of sorcery that the Wizard Caliph does not know, and he specializes in the lifting and laying of curses. And there is also Sudenberg, and the fox-eared among you will notice that this is not an Arabic name, but actually in the Imperial tongue. And that is because this is not an Arabian city, but an Imperial colony founded during the time of the Crusades against Araby. Nonetheless, it still resides inside the Gulf of Medes, and it is a very important enclave for business dealing with the Old World via Araby. There are also several uninhabited cities. Bel Aliad, which in its prime was one of the most ancient cities of Mehekara, where it is famed as the city of spices. During the wars against Nagash, it was left in ruins and eventually resettled. It is currently in ruins and devoured by the desert sand. Once the capital of a proud Arabian civilization, it was destroyed by the undead forces of Arkhan the Black. And this is over a thousand years before the founding of the Empire, to put that in perspective for you. It is said that within these ruins, priceless treasures are hidden, although few adventurers return to verify the story. There are also elven ruins, the remains of a once great coastal city in the southern tip of Araby that existed when the entire coastal area of Araby was an elven colony. This was of course abandoned by 1,500 years before the foundation of the Empire. Antoch, formerly known as a Crusader city, founded by Bretonian knights after the Crusades against Araby on the northern coast of the Gulf of Medes, it was destroyed in 2500 IC, 2500 years after the foundation of the Empire by the Lizardmen, who sought to recover an artifact stolen some 700 years before by Pierre d'Antoc. The early years of Araby's history are not well documented by the scholars of the Old World, but it is known that Araby suffered invasions from the two kings of the Land of the Dead after the fall of the Khemri civilization at the hands of the first necromancer, Nagash. Later, Arkan the Black invaded Araby with his undead army and sacked the city of Bel Aliad a thousand years before the founding of the Empire, precipitating what would be known as the War of Death, a 1,000 year long war in which Arkan reduced a once mighty and wealthy Arabian civilization to a few weak city-states and a handful of fiercely independent desert tribes. It was only when Nagash called Arkan back to the land of the dead that the wars ended. 
It was over a thousand years after the founding of the empire that Ibn Jalabar, a famous explorer of Araby, discovered the lost Lizardman city of Zlatlan. There, he was welcomed, since the Slan predicted his arrival, of course, and was able to barter with the peaceful Lizardmen and exchange the pearls and spices of Araby for gold, which the Lizardmen had in abundance and were quite willing to part with, since it was considered worthless. Jelaba returned to Araby, a very rich man, after establishing the first trade agreement between Lizardmen and humans. Three hundred years after this event, Jafar, a powerful Arabian sorcerer, wielded a coalition of several desert tribes and expanded his city-state into a small empire with the capture of al Haik, Kofa, Martek, and Lashaik. Legends speak of him summoning demons and conversing with spirits. The Skaven in Araby, secretly allied with the Sultan Jafar, spying for him and murdering his rivals in exchange for warp shekels. Warp shekels! In 1448 IC, Jafar, convinced by the nefarious Skaven that the Astalian kingdoms were planning an invasion against his rule, gathered a vast army and prepared his fleet for war. In response, large contingents of knights from Britonia and the Empire drove the Arabian forces back to their homeland. The war was eventually brought by the Knights of the Old World to Araby itself, precipitating the conflicts known as the Crusades, which created many orders of Imperial and Bretonian chivalry, including the Empire's Knights of the Blazing Sun or Knights of Magrita. Around the year 1500 IC, Sultan Darius E. Quabir launched a series of religious wars against the Old World without any lasting success. Legends dating from this time have coloured Old World attitudes to Arabians of Araby. Although there is a fair amount of trade between the two areas, still. The Sultans of Araby The Sultans of Araby are proud of their troops, and especially their cavalry, so that no expense is spared either on their equipment or maintenance. It is popularly supposed the horses of Araby are descended from elven horses brought over from the west many centuries ago. They are graceful and swift creatures, and very highly valued. The very best of the Arabian foot soldiers are also well equipped with steel armour, keen tower walls, gleaming helmets, and fine silk clothing. These household troops or guards accompany the sultans when they travel beyond the grounds of their magnificent palaces. The loyalty of these troops is famous. They are amply rewarded with riches, luxuries, and prestige as a result. The ordinary foot soldiers are more plainly equipped and usually carry simple iron-hafted spears or bows. As well as these regular and garrison troops, there are irregular fighters from the desert tribes including camel-mounted warriors from the lands to the south and the east. Arabians have also been known to field elephants in battle, which are an exotic creature even in Araby, for they come from the lush bushlands that lie between Araby and the jungles of the southlands. The sultans like to collect all kinds of wild and monstrous beasts, and they eagerly compete against each other when it comes to maintaining the largest and most impressive herd of elephants. These are ferocious and dangerous creatures, all the more so because each carries a wooden tower upon its back, within which ride Arabian warriors armed with long spears and assorted missiles that they hurl at their enemies below. Arabian magicians have the ability to bind desert demons to their will, enabling them to command jinn to carry them from place to place. Most of these magicians are mystics from the southern lands, and they are often the court magicians of sultans themselves, riding flying carpets, aerial spirits bound to the spiralling patterns of carpets. 
In battle they use spells such as a sandstorm summoning spell, commanding the desert spirits to engulf their foes in a swirling cloud of choking sand and dust, using mirages to create a host of fearsome warriors bearing down inexorably on startled foes, which turn out to be just an illusion. Sunstrike, using beams of burning energy to leap from the sorcerer's eyes and scythe through people before him. Curse of the Jinn. The sorcerer will then channel the immense power of the Jinn through his own body and lay a terrible curse on the foe. In addition to fielding elephants, Arabian commanders, uh, likely to be the Grand Vizier of the uh, faction, or, or perhaps the great Sultan himself, for few Sultans were so bold as to take the field personally, but uh, throughout history there have been some notable exceptions, such as the mighty Sultan Jafar, who led a powerful army into Estalia and besieged the Tilean city of Tobaro, but uh, subordinate usually uh, command the army, sometimes from the backs of elephants in an extremely garish regalia. Uh, 